ministry of the two-day weekend offers lessons for today's calls for a four-day work week. This is on The Conversation by Brad Beaven, Professor of Social and Cultural History, University of Portsmouth of the UK. The idea of reducing the working week from an average of five days to four is gaining traction around the world. Businesses and politicians have considered a switch to fewer but more productive hours spent work working, but the idea has also been derided. As a historian of leisure, it strikes me that there are a number of parallels between debates today and those that took place in the 19th century when the weekend, as we know it, was first introduced. Having Saturdays as well as Sundays off work is actually, actually a relatively modern phenomenon. Throughout the 19th century, government legislation reduced working hours in factories and prescribed regular breaks, but the weekend did not simply arise from government legislation. It was shaped by a combination of campaigns. Some were led by half-day holiday movements, others by trade unions, commercial leisure companies and employers themselves. The, the formation of the weekend in Britain was a piecemeal and uneven affair that had to overcome unofficial popular traditions that punctured the working week during the 19th century. Saint Monday, for much of the 19th century, for example, skilled artisan workers adopted their own work rhythms as they often hired workshop space and were responsible for producing items for their buyer on a weekly basis. This gave rise to the practice of Saint Monday. While Saint Monday mimicked the religious Saint, holiday, Saint Day holidays, it was in fact entirely secular practice instigated by workers to provide an extended break in the working week. They worked intensively from Tuesday to finish products by Saturday night so they could enjoy Sunday as a legitimate holiday, but also took Mondays off to recover from Saturday night and the previous day's excesses. By the mid-19th century, St. Monday was a popular institution in British society, so much so that commercial leisure, like music halls, theaters and singing salons, staged events on this unofficial holiday. Workers in the early factory system also adopted a tradition of St. Monday, despite manufacturers consistently opposing the practice as it hurt productivity. But workers had a religious devotion to the unofficial holiday, which made it difficult for masters to break the habit. It continued to thrive into the 1870s and 1880s. Nonetheless, religious bodies and trade unions were keen to instill a more formal holiday in the working week, Religious bodies argued that a break on Saturday would improve work, working class mental and moral culture. For example, in 1862, Reverend George Heaviside captured an optimistic tone of many religious leaders when writing in the Coventry Herald newspaper, he claimed a weekend would allow for a refreshing workforce and greater attendance at church on Sundays. Trade unions, meanwhile, wanted to secure a more formalized break in the working week that they did not really uh, rely on custom. Indeed, the creation of the weekend is still cited as a proud achievement in trade union history. In 1842, a campaign called the Early Closing Association was formed. It lobbied government to keep Saturday afternoon free for worker leisure in return for a full day's work on Monday. The association established branches in key manufacturing towns and its membership was drawn from local civic elites manufacturers and the clergy. Employees were encouraged to establish half-day Saturdays as the early closing association argued it would foster a sober and industrial work, industrious workforce. Trade unions and workers temperance groups also saw the half-day Saturday as a vehicle to advance working class respectability. It's ho it was hoped that they would shun drunkenness and brutal sports like cockfighting, which had traditionally been associated with St. Monday. For these campaigners, Saturday afternoon was singled out as a day in which the working class could enjoy rational recreation, a form of leisure designed to draw the worker from the public house and into elevating and educational pursuits. For example, in Birmingham during 1850s, the association wrote in the daily news, newspaper that Saturday afternoons would benefit men and women who could, quote, take a trip into the country or those who take delight in gardening or any other pursuit which requires daylight could usefully employ their half-Saturday instead of working on the Sabbath. 
they could employ their time in mental or physical improvements, end quote. Business opportunity across the country, a burgeoning leisure industry saw the new half-day Saturday as a business opportunity. Train operators embraced the idea, charging reduced fares for day trippers to the countryside on Saturday afternoons, with increasing numbers of employers adopting the half-day Saturday Theaters and music halls also switched their star entertainment from a Monday to Saturday afternoon. Perhaps the most influential leisure activity to, hope, to help for, forge the modern week was a decision to stage football matches on Saturday afternoon. The football craze, as it was called, took off in the 1890s just as a new working week was beginning to take shape. So Saturday afternoons became a very attractive holiday for workers as it facilitated cheap excursions and new exciting forms of leisure. The adaptation of the modern weekend was neither swift nor uniform, as ultimately the decision for a factory to adopt the half-day Saturday rested with a manufacturer. Campaigns for an established weekend had begun in the 1840s, but it did not gain widespread adoption for another 50 years. By the end of the 19th century, there was an irresistible pull towards marking out Saturday afternoon and Sunday as the weekend. While they had their different reasons, employers, religious groups, commercial leisure, and workers all came to see Saturday afternoon as an advantageous break in the working week. This laid the groundwork for the full 48-hour weekend as we now know it, and although this was only established in the 1930s, once again it was embraced by employers who found that the full Saturday and Sunday break reduced absenteeism and it did improve efficiency. And this is on the conversation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.